Okay, here we go. Chapter one. Introduction. Quote, to start, we cannot abolish war by outlawing it. We cannot end it by disarming the strong. War can be stopped not by making the strong weak, but by making every nation weak or strong able to defend itself. If no country can be attacked successfully, there can be no purpose in war. Nikola Tesla. All right, inspiration. Einstein theorized that mass is swappable with energy. Assuming he's right, this would imply that nations could one day learn how to swap some of their mass-based, i.e. kinetic defense systems, with energy-based, i.e. non-kinetic defense systems, for applications related to physical security and national defense. Modern militaries already utilize both cyber and electronic defense systems, but perhaps there is some other type of defense technology that could combine electric and cyber defense systems together into an electro-cyber form of defense technology. If true, then perhaps one day society will learn how to utilize this special type of technology as a soft form of warfare to resolve international policy disputes, establish dominance hierarchies, defend property, rebalance power structures, or even mitigate threats associated with hard war fighting, such as nuclear escalation. Energy is swappable with mass, mass is swappable with energy, E equals MC squared. Other titans of the American Industrial Revolution had complementary ideas about using electricity to mitigate the threat of war. In 1921, Henry Ford, while reportedly standing with Tesla's rival Thomas Edison, claimed society could eliminate one of the root causes of war fighting by learning how to create an electric form of currency that bankers couldn't control. 1921. Both Tesla and Ford saw potential in the idea of using electricity to either eliminate a root cause of warfare or eliminate a root cause of warfare's associated destruction and losses. However, neither were successful at building the technology required to test or validate their hypothesis. This could have been because both theories predated, predated the invention of intelligent machines, a.k.a. general purpose stored program computers. Both Tesla and Ford's theories predated the popular theoretical framework we call computer science and the development of abstraction we call software. This thesis was inspired by the following question. What if Tesla and Ford were both right, and they were both describing the same technology? What if Ford's theory is valid, and it is indeed feasible to mitigate a root cause of warfare by converting electricity into monetary and financial information? What if Tesla's theory is valid, that, and the future of warfare does indeed involve intelligent machines competing against each other in human out-of-the-loop energy competitions? Would this technology not reduce casualties associated with traditional kinetic warfighting? If it did, would this technology not be wor worth every watt? Assuming Tesla's theories were valid, then what might soft warfighting technology look like? How might this technology impact or reshape ag agrarian society's social hierarchies and power structures after spending well over 10,000 years predominantly fighting hard or kinetic wars. If Tesla's intelligent machines are in fact computers, then wouldn't their power competition be dictated by a computer program? Maybe humanity's soft and futuristic form of electro-cyber warfare would take the form of an open source software computer pro protocol. 
and because nothing like it has ever been seen before, maybe nobody would recognize it. This concept is illustrated in figure two. A software protocol could theoretically utilize society's internationally dispersed global electric power grid and existing internet infrastructure to empower computers to impose severe physical, physically prohibitive costs on other computers in, from, and through cyberspace. It could combine Tesla's and, and Ford's ideas together and serve as both a software protocol and a monetary network. There's no logical reason to believe it couldn't serve both functions simultaneously, considering how the development and expansion of all technologies need financing, especially defense industrial complexes, of which we here in America have quite a large one. Here's an even more compelling idea. Maybe software technology already exists and nations are already starting to adopt it. Maybe this new form of power projection technology is already demonstrated in how it can empower every nation, weak or strong, to physically secure their interests like never before, thus fulfilling Tesla's prediction. Perhaps this electro-cyber warfighting technology is hiding in plain sight, but people don't recognize it yet because they are mistaking it for a peer-to-peer -peer electric electronic cash system. Finally, perhaps all it will take for society to recognize that they're entering a completely new transformational paradigm of non-lethal warfighting is simply a different point of view. To that end, the author presents this thesis. Okay, 1.2, justification. Airplanes are interesting toys, but of no military value. General Ferdinand Fock, Supreme Allied Commander of World War One. You know, some people say some stupid shit, you know? If a software protocol were invented, is it safe to assume we would recognize its military value? Having suffered through two world wars and fallen into the brink of strategic nuclear annihilation within the past century, it's easy to look skeptically back at Tesla and Ford's theories and think pessimistically about them. But maybe they weren't, tr but maybe they were truly onto something. Their design concepts could have been right, but the computer science needed to implement their ideas, needed to imp implement their ideas, simply wasn't developed yet. If that's true, then it would be worthwhile to revisit these design concepts and investigate them further now that society is a century older and technology and technologically mature, especially with respect to computer technology. The justification for this research can be explained with a thought experiment. For the sake of argument, let's assume that one, soft war fighting is possible, and that two, soft wars would be fought using some kind of software protocol. Is it reasonable to believe that society would recognize the strategic importance of functionality of this technology when it was first discovered? The author asserts that there is no reason to believe that a non-kinetic, immaterial, or disembodied form of soft warfighting technology would look anything remotely like ordinary warfighting technology. It seems possible, perhaps likely, that this technology would not be recognizable as warfighting technology because it would look and behave nothing like the technologies we normally associate with warfighting. It's hard to feel confident that society would be able to recognize the functionality of this type of technology if it emerged considering how many times in recorded history that previous empires failed to recognize strategically vital warfighting technologies when they first emerged. Technologies would seem obvious in hindsight. Of course, airplanes have military value. Well done, Jason. Well put. Waiting for that one. Uh, in the ninth century, the Chinese alchemists who invented black powder thought it was medicine. It took them centuries to realize the black powder had substantial potential as a new type of warfighting technology for a new type of warfare. For some reason, people during this time were inclined to investigate the national strategic security applications of charcoal, sulfur, and saltpeter mixtures. Why? 
because perhaps it was because no one had ever thought to use black powdery mixtures to project physical power and impose severe physical costs on adversaries. That changed in the 13th century when iron foundry engineers started inventing complementary technologies to utilize black powder for its capacity to produce lots of power and impose severe physical costs on adversaries. In the 1450s, Emperor Constantine the 11th refused to support the adoption of cannons after Orban, the iron foundry engineer, invented them and offered to build them to defend Constantinople against the neighboring Ottoman Empire. Emperor Constantine was killed a year later during the cannon siege of Constantinople. At the time, cannons were called explosive engines. In the 1520s, China burnt down their asymmetrically dominant naval fleet shortly before the discovery of the Americas and the emergence of European naval dominance throughout the Age of Sail, a mistake which has taken more than six centuries to correct. In the 1860s, the British Royal Navy passionately denounced and refused to adopt self-propelled torpedoes when English engineer Robert Whitehead invented them. In, 19, in the 1920s, U.S. Army General Billy Mitchell was demoted and court-martialed for insubordination after lambasting U.S. Army, Navy, and congressional leaders for their incompetence. General Mitchell accused his superiors of near treasonous incompetence because they refused to accept the validity of emergent theories that airplanes would become equally strategically vital as battleships and other major military programs at the time. He died nine years before these theories were conclusively validated by the Japanese attack of Pearl Harbor. He was posthumously restored the rank of general and awarded a Congressional Gold Medal a year after the conclusion of World War II. Today, General Mitchell is celebrated as a maverick and wildly recognized as the founding father of the U.S. Air Force. That's... Scary similar to the trial of Socrates. I hope that doesn't happen to Jason. That's all I have to say about that. For this beautiful piece of philosophies put together. Um, okay. There is no shortage of other examples to demonstrate society's notorious inability to recognize the vital strategic importance of emerging power projection technologies after they're first discovered. Incidentally, there is also no shortage of examples to illustrate how emerging power projection technologies make or break empires. Yet somehow, despite how existentially important it is for empires to recognize and master emergent power projection technologies, their leaders keep forgetting this basic lesson of history and allowing their empires to crumble. 50,000 years of write-in testimony indicate that failing to recognize the strategic importance of emergent war fighting technologies is the rule, not the exception. Time and time again, empires rise and fall because they keep allowing themselves to be surprised by the emergence of game change in power projection technologies. Even more absurdly, the people in charge of these empires keep acting like they have an option to refuse or ignore new warfight and technologies after they emerge, as if the cat can be put back in the box as if they live in an isolated bubble completely separated from the rest of the world, as if their empire is the only empire which gets to decide how they're going to use this technology. Why do rulers keep allowing their empires to be disrupted by new power projection technologies? Why do empires keep forfeiting important technological leads over to their adversaries? There are several explanations. Stupidity and treason. And treason. Those are my two reasons. Let's see what he says. One simple explanation is that society keeps repeatedly making the same mistake of believing that the next war will look like the last war. 
To be more specific, people keep making the same mistake of expecting next century's strategically vital warfighting technologies to look like last century's strategically vital warfighting technologies. Faulty assumptions, expectations, and mental models can account for this blind spot. People aren't checking their assumptions, so they aren't aware of how presumptuous they're being. First principles, damn it. It's clearly difficult for empires to recognize strategically vital applications of new technologies, even when that technology is placed right in front of their faces. Empires don't adopt vital new technology even after it's adopted by competing empires. Empires don't take new technology seriously even when their own military offers literally scream at them to take it seriously before the next major disruption of the existing power dominance hierarchy begins. Instead, they discredit them or discharge them. Or, in Socrates' case, they kill him. Oh. One would think that the rulers of these empires would learn from the mistakes of their predecessors. But history shows they keep making the same mistakes. With this history lesson fresh in our minds, let's ask ourselves these questions. <clears throat> Is it reasonable to believe that society would recognize a software protocol if it were invented? Moreover, what would be the potential risks, rewards, and national strategic security implications of a software protocol were invented? would be the potential but one empire doesn't adopt it while neighboring empires do these questions highlight the justification for this thesis it is a vital na national strategic importance to keep an ear to the ground and an eye out for emerging power projection technologies because failing to recognize them take them seriously and adopt them could have dire consequences is failing to sorry like everything in nature empires rise and fall based on their ability to adapt to new power projection tactics techniques and technologies incidentally this is the author's job as u.s national defense fellow at mit to keep an ear to the ground and an eye out for emerging power projection technologies